Perfect. So uh, let us see another example on a statically determined structure. Uh, once again, we have a structure where there are only three support reactions. Now it is a cantilever beam, uh, and we need to uh, calculate the support reactions. So uh, all we need to do is to apply the equations of equilibrium. But before we do that, we would have to analyze this inclined force into uh, perpendicular components, a vertical and a horizontal one. So once again, we have this two kilonewton force. We have the vertical and the horizontal component. And this is a right angled triangle. The horizontal component could be Fx, the vertical component could be Fy. Uh, we know the angle over here, which is 45 degrees. So the sine of 45 degrees is Fy over 2 kilonewtons. Or if you want, Fy is 2 kilonewtons times the sine of 45 degrees, which means that Fy will be equal to, let's calculate that. One point four one four kilonewtons. Once again, and as I said, I cannot stress this out enough. Don't forget the units, please. Uh, because the cosine of forty degrees of forty five degrees, sorry, is the same as the sine of forty five degrees, it is quite easy to solve this one. The cosine should be fx over 2, or fx should also be equal to 1.414 kilonewtons. So 1.414, 1.414 kilonewtons over here. At this point, we have only horizontal and vertical forces. Please don't forget that you also have a moment over here. So what we can do is apply the equations of equilibrium in order to calculate all support reactions. In cantilever beams, it's even easier than in simply supported beams uh, because regardless which equations of equ equation of equilibrium we select, it is possible to calculate one unknown variable, so it's a bit faster. Let's go with the sum of forces in x direction, which has to be equal to zero. Our unknown variable points to the right, so as I said, no matter which direction you select, you should get exactly the same result. It doesn't make any difference, any approach is correct. Uh, but here I just selected this one, so I will not have to change the sign over and over again. So RAH minus 1.414, because it points to the left, has to be equal to zero. Or RAH has to be equal to 1.414. Is that correct? Yep, exactly. We should not forget the units. Never forget the units. I will keep repeating that. I said that at some point it might become boring, but it is very important. And as I said, for the past 11 years, I have been uh, seeing students losing a lot of marks. Some of them actually failed the module because 
of the marks they lost uh, because of the units. So please don't forget that. Uh, the sum of forces in y direction has to be equal to zero. Let's assume that the forces that point upwards are positive because our unknown force, our unknown reaction points upwards. Once again, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, we should get the same result. Um, so here we have RAV minus the five kilonewton force that points downwards minus 1.414 that points downwards as well. And all of them have to be equal to zero. This means that RAV has to be equal to 6.414 kilonewtons. Last but not least, we get the sum of moments about any point. Uh, as I said, it is possible to select any point you want. Uh, typically, we would select a point um, at which at least one of the unknown forces applies. Uh, however, it is not necessary. So um, once again, first come, first served, which point do you want me to calculate the moments about? Point A. Perfect. So, if we calculate the moments about point A, let's assume that the moments that are clockwise are the positive ones. Um, this means that this one, the reaction will be counterclockwise. If we want it, we would say that the ones that point that are counterclockwise are positive. As I said, it doesn't matter. And you will see here. Uh, why it doesn't. So this means that minus MA, it is a counterclockwise moment, so it should be a negative, um, plus five kilonewton, which is the force over here at point B, which is a clockwise moment, so times 0 0.4, plus 1.414 times the distance that is one meter has to be equal to zero. Um, something that I want to highlight over here. Of course, you can see that the moment doesn't have any distance. Uh, for some reason, it is a quite often mistake uh, of students to actually uh, try to calculate some distance for the moments as well. Of course, it is incorrect. Um, and please keep in mind that even if this moment was not at point A, let's say it was at point C, it would just still be MA, not MA times any distance. Uh, so moments are what we call free vectors. Uh, they can be moved uh, all over the plane or the space if we had a three-dimensional structure. So in this case, if we move MA to the right side, it gets a positive sign. So MA should be equal to five times 0 0.4 plus 1.414. So five times 0 0.4 is two plus 1.414. This is point. 414 kilonewton meters or kilonewtometers as we call them. Another source of uh, mistakes is to actually just use kilonewtons for the units over here. Uh, because if you don't have a fixed support, you will not have any moments. So many students. Uh, are used to only using kilonewtons uh, in the answer. Of course, it depends on the type of reaction, and uh, it is not, uh, well, kilonewtons is not a panacea. Uh, any question on this example? Or perhaps up to this point? No? 
All right, it's good to see that. All right, so uh, yeah, okay, read something strange with okay, perfect. Uh, let us see another example now. Once again, a statically determined structure. The main difference with the previous ones is that in this structure here we have a uniformly distributed load. Um, now, when it comes to uniformly distributed loads, as I said, uh, we are calculating the resultant force. The resultant force is a force that we use to substitute the uniformly distributed load and then perform all calculations. Uh, we need to keep in mind that this force is a fictitious one. So it is something that we use, but it is not actually there. So even if we use it and we get results, uh, the performance of this structure would not be as if we had a point load. We will see what it means uh, for our results uh, anyway. Now, the resultant force of a rectangular uh, load is actually a force that applies well directly in the mid span where the udl applies on and it should be equal to the magnitude of the load three times the length over which it applies so times four this gives us 12 kilonewtons at a distance of two meters from both ends. Now that we have the result on force, all we need to do is to solve for this beam over here. This is R A D. This is R A X. This is R B V. And this over here is 12 kilonewtons, which is the resultant force. Once again, at a distance of two meters from both ends of the beam. Uh, this would be point A, this would be point B. So <clears throat> here you can also see that we have selected already, or in this question it was selected already, the positive uh, direction of the forces and the moments. If it is selected for you, you have to use that. If it is not selected, you can do whatever you want. As I said, it will not affect the results. So here we start with the sum of forces in y direction. Uh, something that we can actually do and something that I usually propose is to start with the sum of moments. The reason why we, well, I propose to start with the sum of moments is because you get a result and then you don't have to go back to an equation and uh, resume solving uh, because this equation had two unknown variables. If you start with sum of moments, you will always uh, have only one unknown variable. Of course, for statically determinate structures. Uh, so here, if we start with the sum of moments, for example, about point A, we are instructed to assume that the moments that are counterclockwise are positive. So we have to use that. The sum of moments has to be equal to zero. I selected point A so that the moment of RAH and the moment of RAV will be zero. So two out of three unknown reactions will have zero moments, so they will not be in this equation. So I will only have one unknown 
and I will be able to solve for that. So let's start with the unknown variable. RBV tends to rotate the beam counterclockwise. So because it tends to rotate it counterclockwise, as you can see, it is a positive moment. So RBV times the distance times four meters. But we also have the resultant force you can see over here at the bottom, for example. This is a clockwise moment. It tends to rotate it clockwise about point A. So it is a negative one minus 20 times the distance, which is two meters. And this has to be equal to zero. So if you solve for RBV times four, it has to be equal to 24 or RB P has to be equal to six kilonewtons. As always, don't forget the units. So you see that we have already calculated one unknown variable. Now let's say that we go to some of forces in y direction, which has to be equal to zero. We are instructed to assume that the forces that point upwards are positive. So R A V minus 12 kilonewtons plus R B V that is now known, 6 kilonewtons, is zero. This means that R A V has to be equal to, well, R A V minus 6 is zero, or R A V is 6 kilonewtons. Last but not least, the sum of forces in x direction has to be equal to zero. We are instructed to assume that the forces that point to the right are positive. So R A H and no other force has to be equal to zero. So this is the result. Uh, as you can see over here, I just say zero, I don't say zero kilonewtons because it actually has no physical meaning. Even if you said zero kilonewtons, it would be a correct answer. So only in this case, you don't have to use units. Even if you use it, it will still be acceptable. Um, and this will be all with this example. Uh, have you got any questions or is everything uh, Quite straightforward. Any questions? Okay. All right. Uh, so I assume that everything seems to be fine. Um, let's move on to the next example. <clears throat> Now, in this example, what you will see is uh, what I mentioned earlier, that when we have moments, the distance doesn't really matter. So in this example, we have a simply supported beam, which means that we have the reactions that you see over here, RA, uh, H, RAV, and RBV. And we have these two moments, a moment that applies at point A and another one at point B. What we need to do is once again to just apply the equations of equilibrium in order to calculate the support reactions. So once again, I will start with the sum of moments, and this is because it is possible to calculate everything directly and not have to go back. So I just save some time, even if you started let's say with the sum of forces in X or Y direction, it will still be fine, but it would take a little longer. Uh, so this is just a tip to save some time. Let's start with the sum of moments about point A, which has to be equal to zero. And I selected point A so that the moment of RAV and the moment of RAH will be zero. You could have selected any point, as I said, uh, 
In this case, even if you selected point B, it will be the same. Now, there is no instruction on the positive direction, so it is up to us. Let's assume that the moments that are clockwise are positive, and I do that because both moments, both concentrated moments are clockwise, so it is easier this way. Uh, another tip when you are solving uh, statically determinate structures, start with the moments. Uh, it is quite often to forget some concentrated moments uh, when they apply on the structure. In some cases, student have, uh, students have, have forgotten to add the reaction when it was a fixed support. Uh, so yeah, start with the moments. So we have the moment at point A, which is 12 kilonewtons, and because it is clockwise, it is positive. We have the moment at point B, which is 8 kilonewtons, and because it is clockwise, it pos it's positive. And then we have the moment due to RBV, which is counterclockwise, so it is a negative one minus RBV times five meters. And all of them have to sum up to zero. As you saw, for the eight kilonewton, I didn't use any distance because, well, it doesn't matter, as I said, uh, we don't have to multiply by that. I keep repeating that because for some reason it's a mistake that I see quite often. <clears throat> so, if we solve for RBV, RBV times 5 has to be equal to 20 kilonewtometers, or RBV has to be equal to 20 over 5, that is 4 kilonewtons. Let's move on to the sum of forces in y direction. It has to be equal to zero. I see here that both unknown reactions are pointing upwards, so I will keep this direction as the positive myself. So, RAV plus, well, now we know RBV for kilonewtons has to be equal to zero. We don't have any other forces the moments here don't really uh, apply. So RAV has to be equal to minus four kilonewtons. This negative sign implies that RAV would be pointing downwards. You don't have to change anything, just leave it as it is. It's the best approach. Um, Last but not least, the sum of forces in y direction has to be equal to zero. I selected the ones that point to the right to be positive. So R A H has to be equal to zero because we have no forces. And that will be all. Uh, have you got any questions on this example? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I assume that the rest of you have no questions, so I can uh, move on with the next slide. Now here, as you will see, we have a trash. Uh, while the trusses are solved differently when it comes to internal forces, it is exactly the same uh, when it comes to uh, calculating the support reactions. The main difference that you will see over here is that um, here these forces have, well, the horizontal and the vertical components, both of them will have some distance from the points that we might select for the sum of moments. Um, let me answer to Samuel's question. 
Samuel, here, if I can go back to the previous example. Uh, we haven't calculated any moment, so uh, the results are all, uh, the unknown forces are all well, forces, uh, and this is why they are in kilonewtons. Uh, it doesn't have to do with the equation of equilibrium that we use, so it doesn't matter that we use the sum of moments, but with what we calculate over here. Uh, so we calculated forces, and that's why they are in kilonewtons. Uh, I hope this uh, helps and answers your question. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so, to go back to this thrust, uh, the first thing we need to do is to analyze these inclined forces. Now, as you can see, we are given the angle over here, but we are not given this angle. So, in other words, if we were to analyze these forces, we need to apply some trigonometry. What I will do is to just draw this horizontal component, come on, this horizontal component over here and the vertical component over here as well. And now we see that this uh, force is parallel to the horizontal axis. Because we have two parallel lines, this angle over here should be equal to this angle over here, alpha. So this angle will be, well, all of them together will add up to 180 degrees. So this one will be 180 minus 90. So 90 degrees minus alpha. In other words, if I want to analyze this inclined force, yeah, let's say five kilonewton, what I need to do, let's call this one F, one y and this one f one x is to calculate this angle over here which is 90 minus alpha to calculate 90 minus alpha i just need to calculate alpha so uh, i will use trigonometry to calculate alpha and i can see that the height of this triangle a well let me call this point point c so from uh, the height of abc is 2.4 meters <clears throat> i also see that this is a symmetrical triangle which means that this is one meter and this is one meter as well. So if I define a point over here, let me call it point D, and I just draw with a dashed line this side, triangle ACD is a right angled triangle. This means that I can use the height CD, which I already know, 2.4 meters, and the base AD, which I also know it is 3 meters, and use trigonometry to calculate angle A. So I can see over here that, for example, the cosine of angle A is CD over AD or 2.4 meters over 3 meters or 0 0.6, which means that angle A will be the inverse cosine of 0 0.6. 
So it will be the angle that has a, cos a cosine of 0 0.6. Let's calculate that. Uh, 0 0.8, yes, uh, you're correct. Sorry for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm really sorry for that. This is the tangent. Ah, I don't know what's going on with me today. <laughs> I apologize for that as well. Sorry. It is indeed the tangent, the opposite over the uh, adjacent side. Wow. Um, thank you, Joe. <laughs> thank you, Matt. Uh, so let's do that. This should give us, let's hope that the calculator does it correctly, 38.659 eight degrees. Please keep in mind that uh, when it comes to angles, uh, we need some better accuracy than when it comes to forces. So keep at least four decimals, uh, especially when you intend to be using their trigonometric functions as well. So now that we know angle A, we also know this angle over here that is 90 minus A, which is 51, um, let me call it angle beta. So beta is 90 degrees minus A or 51.3 zero two degrees. Uh, for uh, this module over here, you don't have to convert uh, degrees to the DMS format, degree, minutes, and seconds. So you don't have to do any conversion uh, in the angles. You can just use them uh, with decimals. So uh, now that I know this angle, angle beta, I can use it to calculate F1Y and F1X. Let me do this over here. Five kilonewtons. So the sine of angle beta has to be equal to, well, it is F1y over five, which is also the sine of 51.3402 degrees. So F one Y is equal to let's see uh, 
3.9 kilonewtons. The cosine of angle beta is F one X over five, which is also equal to the cosine of the angle we have calculated, uh, 51.3402 degrees. So F one X has to be equal to Three point one two kilonewtons. So we have a horizontal force over here that is three point one two kilonewtons, and the vertical force over here that is three point nine kilonewtons. We have to do the same for this force over here, for the 10 kilonewton force. Uh, but it is easy to use the uh, symmetry of the triangle. So this angle also has to be equal to A. This means that this angle is also A, which means that this angle is also, not A, sorry, alpha, which means that this angle is also beta. So, because this angle over here is beta, the analysis of the horizontal and the vertical component would be the same. And because this one is two times this one, we know that the horizontal component would be two times this horizontal, and the vertical component would be two times the vertical component. In a test or in an exam, you can just show that and give us the answer directly. You don't have to calculate that. It is acceptable. For this example, I will calculate it so that you see the uh, way that it is uh, being worked out. So we have the 10 kilonewton force. We have the vertical component and the horizontal component. Let's call this one F2X and this one F2Y. Now here, this angle is beta. So the sine of beta is F2y over 10, which is, as we said, the sine of 51.3402 degrees. So F2y has to be equal to 10 times the sine of this angle or 7.8 kilonewtons. The cosine of the angle <coughs> is F to X over 10. Once again, the cosine of 51.3402 degrees. So F2x has to be equal to 7.8. Five. Well, okay, it's two times that, but uh, rounding the number, it becomes a 2.5. Now, don't worry if in your answer this was 6.24, it would still be correct. Uh, the variation in the results would be within an acceptable uh, margin, so it should be fine. Uh, we take that into account when we are marking the tests. 
uh, round of errors, of course, not any kind of errors. So this component over here <clears throat> is uh, 6.25 kilonewtons. And this one over here is 7.8 kilonewtons. Before I continue, uh, is there any question on what we have done up to this point? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you, Joe. Uh, anyone else? Uh, perhaps something that seems confusing? Okay, uh, I assume this is a no, that's great. Um, of course, as I said, both the lecture and the notes will be available on Canvas. So if you go through them and uh, you find something difficult, please uh, send me an email and we can discuss it. Uh, so at this point, what we need to do is to go back to the structure over here and apply the equations of equilibrium. And that will be all. So, well, let me do that in a new slide. Let me just draw the components here. So the horizontal one is 3.12, the vertical one is 3.9, This vertical one is 7.8, and this horizontal one is 6.25. Of course, in your sketch, if you want, you might uh, omit the units because it is something that is there to help you. Uh, it is not marked. So you can skip the units if it helps. Uh, or if you prefer that, you can uh, use them as well. Uh, so now, I will be applying the sum of forces and the sum of moments. Again, I will start with the sum of moments so that I can calculate something. So let me take the sum of moments about any point. Uh, which point do you want me to calculate the sum of moments about? Point A, perfect. So let me calculate the sum of moments about point A. It has to be equal to zero. Do you want me uh, to assume that the clockwise or the counterclockwise are positive? Okay, clockwise moments. So. As I said, uh, regardless the point and regardless the direction, you should get the same results. Uh, but it does seem easier with the uh, clockwise moments because most of them are clockwise. Now, um, about point A, forces RAV and RAH will have no, uh, will create no moment. So. That's good because we only have one unknown variable, which will be RB. Now, let's start with all the vertical forces. We see that we have this force over here that is 3.9, but now we don't know exactly the distance from point A, the vertical distance. This is the vertical distance over here. So we will have to calculate this distance before we can continue with the sum of moments. This can be the case in a test. So don't worry if you go over here and you are missing a variable, just go back and calculate that. It's still okay. It's certainly part of the question to do so. So in this case here, If I can call this 
point, point E, we have triangle A, E, and let me call this point, point F. A, E, F. It is given here that E, F is 1.2 meters. This is a right angle, and angle A was calculated 38.6598 degrees. So to calculate AF, I can use, well, perhaps again the tangent. So the tangent of angle A is 1.2 over AF, which means that AF will be equal to 1.2 meters over the tangent of angle A, uh, sorry, angle alpha. And since I know that alpha is 38.6598 degrees, AF will be let me calculate that. This is one point five meters. So now that I know AF, 1.5 meters, I also know due to symmetry this distance over here, which will still be 1.5, and I will be using that. So I can calculate the moments of all forces. So I can go back to the sum of moments and then start with the uh, vertical forces. So I have the 3.9, it's a clockwise moment. So 3.9 times 1.5, which is the vertical distance from point A. I also have this three kilonewton force that creates a clockwise moment. So plus three times two meters, which is the vertical distance from point A. I have this two kilonewton force, so plus two times four meters. This is the whole distance from point A. Minus seven point A because it points upwards, which means that it would rotate it counterclockwise, so it would be a negative moment times. Now the distance is from the whole six meters. I just need to subtract 1.5. Let me write it like that here. Six minus 1.5. If you want, it's 4.5, of course. And do not forget RB. So minus RB times six meters. At this point, I have to uh, highlight the fact that when it comes to such uh, questions or such examples, a lot of students forget that the horizontal forces also have a moment because there is some vertical distance from point A. So at this point, a lot of students will say this is equal to zero. Please uh, be mindful of uh, that. <clears throat> it is a very common mistake. So we have plus this force, 3.12, that tends to rotate the trash um, clockwise, so it has a positive moment. And the distance is the vertical distance over here between E and F, which is already given, which is 1.2 meters. 
We also have the 6.25, so plus 6.25, and the vertical distance is the same. Now, all of them have to sum up to zero. I don't see another force. Uh, and before I solve this, is there any question? I know that there were quite a few forces and distances over here. Uh, have you got any questions? Uh, is there anything uh, that seems confusing? Mm -hmm. Okay, I see a no. Someone else? Come on, people. It's a yes or no, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, very good. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, if you don't have any questions, let's uh, continue with this example. So, I just have to solve for RB. Now, I see a negative sign, so I just move to move, uh, need to move RB to the right side and then perhaps swap both sides. So RB times 6 is 1.2 uh, well, um, uh, from, uh, from over here, from the sketch, it's already given that it is 1.2, it's the vertical distance between this force, the horizontal one, and point A, it's this distance over here. I hope it uh, answers your question. So, uh, RB times six has to be <clears throat> equal to 3.9, times 1.5 plus 3 times 2 plus uh, 2 times 4 minus 7.8 times 4.5 plus 3.12 times 1.2 plus 6.25 times 1.2. This gives us a minus 4.03. So RB has to be equal to minus 4.03 over 6. This is a negative 0 0.67 kilonewtons. <clears throat> So, uh, now that I have calculated RB, I can either use the sum of forces in uh, y direction uh, to calculate RAV, or if you want, I can use the sum of moments. Of course, there's no need to complicate our lives. So, let's use the sum of forces in y direction. But as I said, it would be exactly the same if you want you can do that in your own time to uh, use the sum of moments, perhaps about point B, in order to calculate RAV. You should get exactly the same result. So let's assume that the forces that point upwards are positive. Here I have RAV minus 3.9 
3.9 minus 3 plus 7.8 minus 2 plus RB, which is negative 0 0.67. And all of them have to sum up to zero. So RAV has to be equal to, let us see, one point seven seven and negative one point seven seven kilonewtons. So now I can use the sum of forces in X direction, which has to be equal to zero. I can select either direction, either the ones pointing to the right or to the left. Let's say that the ones that point to the left are positive because our unknown variable points to the left. So RAH minus uh, 3.12, which is the force at point E, minus 6.25, which is the force at the opposite side, have to sum up to zero. So RAH has to be equal to nine point three seven kilonewtons. And that will be all for this example. Uh, I know that it was more complicated than the previous ones, uh, but um, is there any question in the whole procedure? <clears throat> mm -hmm. So let me just uh, sum um, all the, uh, let's just summarize all the steps that we followed here. Uh, the first step, is to try and analyze all the forces uh, that are inclined. Now, in some cases, like this one over here, we might have some unknown angles. If you do have unknown angles, you will be given all the required information, all the dimensions that are required in order to calculate these angles. So, let's call it step 1.1, which is to use trigonometry to calculate all the unknown angles that you will need in order to analyze your forces. And then once you have all these angles, you can go back and analyze the forces in horizontal and vertical components. Once you have uh, analyzed them in horizontal and vertical components, all you need to do is to apply the equations of equilibrium. Uh, please keep in mind that in cases where you have trusses, um, the horizontal components will also have a moment provided that they are not between the supports. So if you had a horizontal component, let's say at point F, sure, its uh, moment would be zero because there would be no uh, vertical distance from points A or B. But in this case, as you saw, we have moments uh, due to these horizontal components. Now, uh, once you do that for the moments, which is, as you saw, the most complicated one, everything else should be quite straightforward. So everything else is just uh, an application of that. Don't forget to uh, include all forces, and that should be all.
Um, something that I would also like to point out, it applies on uh, all structures that you might um, be solving using these methods, is that when it comes to trusses, of course, we will not have concentrated moments. Uh, the reason is that the moment would have to be uh, on the uh, node here, on the hinge, and if you apply a moment on a hinge, uh, nothing actually happens because uh, theoretically it should just rotate by itself. It should not transfer any moments to the uh, members. So uh, it is not something that can be received by a trash. So when we uh, analyze trashes, uh, they should only have point loads at the joints. All right. So. Um, that will be all actually for today. Uh, we were able to finish uh, relatively early. Uh, have you got any questions? Uh, well, over the whole presentation, or is there something that you would like to uh, discuss? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Perfect. So, uh, as I said, uh, both the lecture recording will and the lecture notes will be available on Canvas. Uh, to view the recording, just go to the conferences and then uh, click on the uh, completed ones, and then the recording will be available to view. Uh, the notes will be in the modules uh, section, uh, so they will be available over there. Uh, please go through the notes um, and see if you have any questions. Uh, what I will be doing, I will also add some further uh, questions uh, that you can uh, solve on your own, some examples, and if um, you see that uh, there is something confusing, feel free to send me an email. Together with these questions, I will also give you the answers so that you can assess your uh, results. Uh, if there is no other question, uh, that will be all for uh, today's session. So uh, let me thank you for uh, joining me into this long presentation. It was a double session for hours, uh, well, three, point, three and a half hours. Uh, still quite long. Thank you for bearing with me, and um, I hope that uh, it will be uh, useful for you. Uh, I will uh, end the recording now, and uh, we'll either communicate uh, via email or uh, I'll see you in the next presentation next week. Thank you very much.